All right, we're here. Pizza and Pasta Expo. Scott from Scott's Pizza Tours. Been on the podcast before. He does so many different things with the pizza industry. It's awesome to see you again, my friend. Yeah, it's amazing to be here. I love it that we're on the middle of the show floor and chatting. I know. Pizza marking. We're at the Fort Zaforni booth. We're talking about pizza at the Pizza and Pasta Expo live. Yes, we're here. What's going on, my friend? Everything's going on. Just like the first few hours of the show are happening and... It's kind of cool to see everybody again, as, it as always. It's like the most exciting part of the expo is just seeing everybody. Do you drive here or do you fly? Oh, I hitch a ride with whoever I can hitch a ride do with. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. I, I had a car for a while, but I don't have a car now. So now when I need to get it down here, it's like, do I take the Greyhound or do I just ask everybody I know for a Take ride? like the mega bus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might have to do that going back, but I could just hitchhike here. I thought about riding my bike. How far is it from you? That would have been a little bit long. It, I guess it's like a two and a half hour drive. Okay, that's, that's not bad, not bad yeah. at all. It's six hours for me. That's a little worse. You drove? Yeah, because it, here's the thing. So if I, I live in Boston. Yeah. So if I take a flight, I got to fly to New York or Philadelphia. And then switch? And then take a car oh, here. Oh, take a car? No, it's not. So it it's the make same sense. amount of time. No, nah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, so I might as well just drive, save myself a little bit of money. And then uh, I get to stop in New York on the way down or the way back. Oh, did you stop? I'm going to stop on the way back. Good. You got places you want to go? Yeah, definitely. What's on your list? I gotta check out my friend Frank from East Village Pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna check out Anthony's place. Maybe if I'm gonna stop at Una. You got it. It's not it, far from East Village Pizza. Yeah, that's why I figured they're pretty close. And then that's probably all the time I have for. Yeah, you'll. That's gonna be. That's a perfect one-two punch. Yeah. I would even recommend go to Una Pizza, then East Village Pizza, because each Village Pizza becomes like a scene later at night. So we're my my family's super into Marvel movies. And like, are you familiar with Marvel movies? Yeah, I've seen a few of them. So like Iron Man, one the first Iron Man, he like the guy brings back a New York pizza to California and like Tony Stark's eating pizza so I told my kids I'm like alright I'll bring you back a legit New York style pizza from New York on the way back that's awesome so they're pumped it's gonna be from East Village yeah I'll bring it East Village they're gonna love it yeah I'm like alright here's school you go to lunch tomorrow and say like this is actual pizza from New York that everyone's gonna be so jealous <laughs> your kids are gonna get beat up no they, they know who I am they won't <laughs> beat them up <laughs> I was gonna say if it's anything like you nobody's gonna mess with them yeah. <laughs> so uh, we were talking earlier we actually met in the hallway here and you were giving a talk I think it's later today right yeah later today there's a panel discussion about the new wave of American pizza makers and then tomorrow morning 9am I'm gonna do uh, like a solo seminar about it's called where, pizza, where I see pizzerias fail that's the one we were talking about yes and I think we were talking about you like, I hope that people don't think it's coming, like I'm telling them or preaching to them like where they're failing, but you have a good point. Like you're coming at it from a consumer's perspective, which I don't think many restaurant owners sometimes look at it that way. Yeah, that's that's the unfortunate correct aspect of it is that, I mean, my, my world, my whole position in this community is that I'm a pizza consumer. Right. I'm not a pizza maker professionally. I don't work in pizzerias. I never managed I mean, one. You, I've never your skills owned are getting one. there though. Well, but that's a different thing. Like, knowing how to make a five pizzas in a day is very different from running a pizzeria. <laughs> that's very true. I'm very aware of that. I mean, I, you know, not to say I can't make a pizza, but look, I'm a <laughs> professional pizza consumer. I spend money on pizza every single day of my life. So for that, I've gotten to know a lot more about how pizzerias function, and also I know a lot more about how customers function right. and what we look for. And unfortunately, there's usually a disconnect between the business owner and their customers. Even for me running my tour business, right. I know that I don't think about everything that my tour customers care about. And if you were to tell me, oh, you know, actually, you know, it'd be better if I got an email the day before that told me where to be and what to wear, you know, that might help me. I mean, right. oh, I never thought of that. Really? Right. I got to, okay. And just in the same way, I can help pizzerias by saying, oh, you know, here's the thing that I as a customer always notice and always turns me off and I feel like you would never know and I would never have a real reason to just tell you in the restaurant. Right. I'm never going to say like, hey, you know what? That that light bulb is out and it really makes me feel like you don't care about <laughs> keeping fresh tomatoes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Someone actually came up to me today and said, hey, listen, I love your podcast, but there was one particular episode where I didn't get a ton of value out of it and I'm like, really? Which one was it? And he explained which one it was. He's like, you, it would have helped me if at the end of that episode you said, okay, now go do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, well, that was great feedback because I would have never have known that because I don't listen to the podcast. I do the podcast and then it's out. Um, if people don't tell me what they want to hear, I would never know what they want me to do. So it's the same thing you're saying as a restaurant owner. It's the feedback from your customer in any business is so important. And as business owners, a lot of us don't want to hear it because we're dealing with the day-to-day -day fires. 
We don't right. want to deal with a fire that we didn't know was happening. Right. But that, in a lot of ways, is the fire. Exactly. So let's go over a couple of those things because this podcast will come out after the Pizza Expo is done. Um, and if you didn't come, you missed out. You got to go check it out. On I'm sure they record the session somewhere, don't they? Yeah, they probably do. And then you can go <laughs> check them out afterwards and see this video. Um, but we'll, let's go over a couple of those. Like, what? Like, give me one or two of the examples from your talk. Sure. Yeah. There's well, a big thing that I know you pick on as well is the digital presence of pizzerias. Yes. I know in my presentation, I like to point out, hey, if your pizzeria is called Pizza Village, and there's a hundred Pizza Village pizzerias around the country, you got to be careful in your social media to make sure you identify yourself so that people know they're following the right one. Right. And that you have in your, your address. In there. I can't believe how many bios I see that there's no address, <laughs> that there's no contact info, that there's on an Instagram bio to, to just have it say, old world pizza done right. Yeah. And then nothing else. Yeah. Uh, it's useless. You're 100% right, especially if you do have like a name that's pretty popular or common. Uh, because if you go into your Instagram account and you go into the search bar and you search for your company's name, you're going to see a lot of information come up. And it's best that you have that information be correct. I just literally did a podcast earlier today about that, about like, that's important to people. Like people sometimes, especially for like, I'm not, I'm, we're in Atlantic City right now. I'm not from Atlantic City. So I'm going to leave here and I'm going to go search for something to eat after I'm done. Like you better have your information to where I can easily find you on whatever platform I'm searching on. Yeah. I, it's just amazing to me how they don't think of the user experience. Right. So things like the website. Like, when, why would I go to a pizzeria website? Oh, it, it's because I've heard of them. I'm looking them up to find out their hours, their location. How do I order their pizza? Can I make a reservation? It's, a it's, menu. Yeah, exactly. And if any of that stuff is not available right away, then it's a waste. Right. If I have to dig to find your address, that to me is nuts. Yes. If the menu is something I have to download to a PDF, and it's nuts to me now that we have Wix and Squarespace and all these things, that you can adjust your website from your phone, you should have everything right there, easy to look at, easy to see. Yeah. And people, I was doing a talk and I said, you go to your phone, right? And I'm sure you've done this, or I know I have. And if, if you type in something and it doesn't pop up in like three seconds, I will X out that tab, open a new one, and type in the same exact thing, thinking it's going to go faster. Yes. So like the speed in which you can find that information is important and like you said people want to know your phone number your address your web your menu like can they make a reservation what do they do if they have a question like those are the things that need to be easily found as soon as they go to your homepage. exactly and they, you got to think about why would somebody go to that website ever right think about that and then okay put all the stuff there right just like on my tour website I all the time have to have to deal with like oh uh on the front page, there has to be a way for them to get to the tour calendar. There has to be a way for them to know how to buy a ticket right away and to get gift certificates. Now, did you get that feedback from people? Yeah, from people, from uh, marketing people. I hired a marketing person who we finally like did a heat map of the website and figured out yeah. what people look at. I've gotten buttons on there that nobody ever clicks. Right. So that means get rid of the button. <laughs> Just like on your menu, if you got a thing nobody's eating... Get rid of the thing. <laughs> That's totally true. I, I, I know somebody who, uh, I think he cut 42% of his menu down. He got rid of 42% of the menu. And I think that that accounted for 6% of sales or something like, something even smaller than 6%. It's the 80-20 principle. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You make all of it, or 80% of it from yeah. 20% of the menu. I think that if you think about it that way, and you just try to be efficient and not think with your heart, think more with your head for things like business, then you'll run a smoother business. You could literally just ask customers that walk into your business instead of being like shooting the shit and being like, hey, how's the weather? Or it's nice out today. Be like, hey, how did you find us? Did you go to the website? What did you think? Was it totally. easy to use? Ask them every I always ask people on the tour, how did you find this? What made you want to sign up for this particular tour? Yeah. Oh, it's just because this is the only tour we offer on Tuesday afternoon? That's good to know. Right. That means that maybe I can offer any tour that time slot and that would work. Nice. It, it's You just got to think about it. The logistics are so important. Why is it that you think owners, and I'm in, I'm included in this because I was a former owner and I, I'm listening to what you're saying. I did all that stuff. 
I never really got feedback. Why is it that we don't really do that? We don't ask for feedback. Is it fear? I think you got bigger things to deal with. Oh, the, the walk-in went down. Right. I don't have time to ask you that question. That's a big part, especially when it's owner-operators who have one or two locations. You're juggling so many other things at the same time. You think about that, oh, I'll deal with that once we dial in our dough recipe. Right, right, I'm right. working on the dough. It's this. always like something that's not as important, so it's always put on the back burner. Yeah, but it is the most important. True, because if you don't have customers, you don't have business. Exactly. Like I think you tweeted the other day um, something about that really resonated with me, and I'd heard it a couple times from people. And when you said it, it was something about like the analogy you made was like cutting money from marketing was like stopping your watch to save time. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah that's what it was. And yeah. I loved it so much. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, exactly. You that's not how it works. People are constantly not finding your pizzeria every day because there are 25 Joe's pizzerias. <laughs> right. And if you don't write Joe's Madison, Wisconsin or something like that, then right. people are always going to go to the wrong one. Yeah, you might be giving the business to the right competitor down the street. It's just the way it works. Without you knowing. Yeah, remember, look, in, in Instagram and in Twitter and your Facebook and all your bios, all the imagery you use, all that, people have to be able to see that and know where you are. What's number two? Uh, let's see. Give one more. Yeah, let's see. Now for the rest of them, you got to go watch Scott's talk. Uh, yeah, well, I got to remember exactly what it is. So, okay, here's a big one. People are looking at things besides your food. And a lot of pizzerias, a lot of restaurants care mostly about their food, which is that's the product, so that's good. But even more important than that is understanding how people get into the place. There's a broken sign, something's funny about the window. It doesn't look like a business that's open because you have curtains over the windows all the time. Right. These are things that keep people away. So I know pizzeria in Brooklyn, they got curtains on the windows, the place never looks open. And I got people telling me, oh, they're always closed. And I say, no, they are open. Oh. But they just don't look open because it's an old school place. Now, does that place do it on purpose? Or they are do they it because like, that's the way they've always done it. Or are it. they hurting for business? And they're like, what the heck? Why are we hurting for business? Yeah, they're definitely hurting for business, but they don't care. Oh, it's, really? I mean, little things like that. I, I know it sounds crazy to say this. I'm almost embarrassed to say it. But if your bathroom's a mess, people will have a bad experience in your restaurant. Yeah. Always. If for me, it's the front door. From one of the things I always look for when I walk into a restaurant, um, or a drive-through for that matter, like is if whatever glass is in front of me when I walk into that entrance, if it's not clean, yeah, it makes me second guess whether if they're not paying attention to the first thing that I see when I walk into your restaurant, or a drive-through window and it's all smudgy. Like it could be one mark here or there because I know like life happens and you can't be on it 24/7. But if it looks like you haven't cleaned it at all today. You should probably take a look at that glass. And oh, be like, yeah. you know, let's wipe that down. That's the first thing the I see when I look at pepper shakers. That yeah. Stuff that's going to touch your food. You look at that and it looks gross and dusty and you're like, I it, don't know. And I know it's hard because that stuff is like, oh, I don't have time to do that. But you got to make time to do it. You're right about it. And, and that's why I have this concern about doing a talk like this. Because it sounds really like nitpicky and whiny, but these are the things that actually matter to people. Yeah. And I've, I, I just talked to somebody earlier today who said, oh, you know, I went to New York and I went to this place and, you know, there was a, I saw a cockroach on the floor. And of course that's going to turn somebody off. Of course it will. Of right. course you don't want one. You didn't plan to have a cockroach on the floor. You didn't want that to happen. But there are little things you can do, like making sure that the bathroom is regularly checked important thing. Right. It's embarrassing for customers to say, oh, you're out of toilet paper. Right. It's embarrassing. Oh, you're out of soap. Then you look at the person like, well, then your hands are gross right now. And these are things like, uh, this is, I know it's tough to hear and we sound like we're, we're like hammering you with points, but I think these are the, these are the little things that aren't going to necessarily have a customer come say to you. Like they're not going to be like, Hey, this, the door is dirty. So I didn't come in. Then the salt and pepper shaker was dirty. I didn't come in, but it may second guess them to come back again. You hit the nail on the head, and this is like at the end of the presentation tomorrow. It's like most of these things nobody will ever say to you. Right. Because they're so small, or they seem small. But that means that they're even more important. Because the last thing you want is us to go home and to talk about your restaurant behind your back. Oh, how gross it was. And then, you know, when I hear people say that, I say, oh, well, did you talk to the manager about right. it? Right. Because, you know, there's a person whose job it is to listen to you and fix that. And then they say, oh, no. And you can't say, well, then you're wrong. You say, oh, well, then how can a manager 
think around that and right. figure out what the problem is. And, and take that. Take if someone does happen to come up to you and say, "Hey, listen, I noticed this." Like, take it with a grain of salt, right? Like, don't get all bent out of shape about it. Huh. They're trying to help you. Like, yeah. if somebody tells me something about my website. Somebody told me, like, within the past year, "Oh, you know, your website's not secure." I said, what are you talking about? And they said, well, when you open the website on top, it says not secure because you don't have an SSL certificate. Right. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess I, well, you don't buy the tickets on my website. It actually uses a third party. And they're like, I don't know that. Right. And I have used your site and I still don't know that. But to me, I'm buying it on your website. And so what do I do? Not tell them, piss off. I say, okay, how do I get an SSL certificate now? Right. Right now. Right. Uh, that's what I did. And by the way, you can just do that. You go to like GoDaddy or something. And it, buy, you do right? it instantly. Yeah. But I see it all the time. Anything that comes up that says not secure is a problem. Yes. Anything that's up, but even if no no transactions happen, it's a turnoff. And then to me, now I see it on a website and I'm like, oh, this person's not a pro. Right. Little thing, a couple hundred bucks maybe. Not even. It's like 10 bucks, isn't it? Is that it? what it is? I think it's like 10 bucks. Oh, man, I got hosed. <laughs> Just kidding, Bruce. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, uh, that's what the talk's going to be. It's going to be really fun, hopefully. I'm excited. So if you're, I mean, you you missed it if you're listening to this podcast right now because it already happened, but you give talks like this at every expo pretty much, right? Yeah, I give t- something like this. Whatever the expo people tell me they want me to talk about, like, I'll tell you now, here's the preview of what's going to happen in Vegas. All right, let's Nobody go. Nobody knows this. This is a S, uh, Smart Pizza Marketing Podcast. Exclusive. Exclusive. I'm looking up in my email. Uh, there's probably going to be a talk about pizza boxes. Interesting. Because that's kind of my love. I know. You do love pizza boxes. I do love I mean, pizza you have boxes. Now. So I have like, over 1,500 pizza boxes in my collection. Guinness World Record collection. That's amazing. It's going to be a lecture called What Your Pizza Box Says About Your Business. I'm also going to be doing a lecture called What Your Customers Want From You which is very similar to the How I See right, Pizzerias right. Fail, but it's a little bit more of a positive light. And then, of course, I'm, I'll be doing my annual pizza tour of Las Vegas. I know. i got to hop on that with you one it's day. It's going to be crazy. This year, we're going to switch up some spots. It's always like, you always said like more metro. food than we yeah. ever want. It's usually Metro and Pizza Rock, and then I swap out the third. Yeah. Because uh, I just, like, Pizza Rock is just such a, it's a Swiss Army knife pizzeria. Yeah, yeah. It does everything. It I've been to the one in Vegas, too. It's good. Yeah, and, and then Metro is one dough, but multiple uses. So it's the opposite of Pizza Rock, multiple doughs, multiple Wait, so uses. I've had, the, I've had the, the square pizza there. They use the same dough? That's a five-day ferment, and then the round pizzas are a two-day ferment. Wow. Yeah, but that's same pretty, dough. That's same pretty dough. epic, huh? Yep. Wow. Yep. So you're also doing uh, Slice Out Hunger, right? Yeah, that's the big thing, yeah. Slice Out Hunger is uh, this year we have an event in New York on October 3rd which maybe will be before this airs. but uh, I'll try to get it up before then. Our, our, the big event is going to be sweet. It's at St. Anthony's Church on Houston and Sullivan at 6 p.m. 60 pizzerias from all around New York City, 1,750 pizzas, wow. $1 per slice. All the money goes to City Meals on Wheels. That's amazing. They bring food to the elderly, and uh, it's going to be wild. Biggest pizza party in the city. Who's like uh, some of the pizzerias that are going to be there? Tafara, Caste, Lucali, Joe's, Best Pizza, Pizza Suprema. So any pizza you can think of that is in New York, pretty much that people want to go to, are there. Yeah. So you can just go to one spot. Yeah. Instead of going into New York and spending all your whole day going to a bunch of places <laughs> right. on a pizza tour, you can do it one night hitting up all these spots in one spot. Amazing. So where can they go find any information about that? Sliceouthunger.org. Let me ask you one question. What is the most exciting thing at this expo you've seen so far so i pretty much walked straight back to the competition area where i was judging so i haven't walked the floor that much yet but i'll tell you what i saw happening at the uh, competition area square pizza off the charts rock and bonanza square pizza <laughs> just going crazy come here i want to stick with your face <laughs> Just hanging out here, special guest on the yes, podcast, on the right, podcast now, right now, Johnny Chez, ripping it up. Whoa, that's a King Alberto per- shirt I have not seen yet. I actually have one for you. No, you're not. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. Chiro has it. Uh, Chiro Jr., not Chiro Sr. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. You would have said doing? dad. I'm looking forward to Slice Out Hunger. It's going to be amazing this yes. year. Yes. John's going to be there. I saw the lineup. The pizzeria is like all the pizzerias. They look amazing. Can't wait to be there and try everything. It's going to be amazing. Wow, that's a plug special and a guest. half. Yeah, that is a plug that's and a half. That's a plug and a half from Johnny Chez. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Special guest here. You never know what's going to happen at the Pizza Impossible. You never know. Like, we should just sit here and talk for hours, and then everyone that comes up would just <laughs> kind of pull them in. We should just sit here for like one hour solid, just like, who? All right, there's this guy. Come just on pull in. people off. Yeah, there you go. They get double teamed by us. So I, I didn't even catch what you said you were excited about. I'm sorry. Oh, I was excited about Square Pizzas. Yes. I mean, Square Pizza keeps getting bigger. Not physically. Well, yes, physically, but... People are really loving square pizzas. Lately. What about Roman style pizza? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, that I, I count that within the subset of squares. Okay. Roman pizza not taking off as fast as anybody wants it to. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. I think it's it's like there's a few guys that are doing it pretty well, but it's not like exploding like. Well, people doing it well is definitely happening, but people selling it a lot of it is not happening. I wonder why. You think it's just because the consumers aren't used to it yet? I think yeah, and I think it's kind of a turn off. It's not super portable. It looks really pretty, but it's not what we're used to as pizza yeah. in America. So, like, we, we at the show, yeah, it looks amazing. But then in practical life, it doesn't work as well. Right. What, I, what What's something that you're looking forward to seeing here that you haven't yet? Just a lot of booths I haven't I haven't visited yet. Do you go to every booth? I try to. Do you really? Yeah, like, like a day like today, there's time. Yep. So I know I have about an hour where I can bounce around and see some stuff. So over the next hour, I'll hunt around. I'll come back. I'll let you know it was a highlight. Yeah, definitely. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to talk. I like seeing everybody. Like, I literally like seeing everybody. Like, I talk to a lot of people on the podcast, but I actually like it's the one place or two places with Vegas now in this show that anybody who has a question for me or wants to say hi can come to this this and be like, I'm going to be here. Come say hello. And I get to meet everybody that has been a guest on the podcast. That's super huge. And it's, it's, it's really huge for all these people who listen to your podcast and have never met you right. and maybe have never been to a show. I, the big advice, if any, I could ever give to anybody is – reach out to people online be part of the community yeah. on facebook and on instagram and like that community is so tight yeah. people will see each other here and say oh hey i am such and such handle from wisconsin yeah yeah and like like you, you're already part of it you don't have to physically be here you're i say it on the podcast it. a lot like email me or direct message me if you have a question and they'll direct message me and be like i listen to nick bogats on the podcast and i have a question for him i'm like you know what here's his email he said I could give it out. Go email him. He will answer your question. Like, yeah. everybody that's been on the podcast or comes to these expos are, like, super nice. Like, go up to him, ask him a question, say hello. Like, don't be afraid. Everybody, there's not one person that I've been like, hey, what's going on? They're like, get away from me. Yeah. <laughs> that's not how this works. <laughs> yeah. If you're the kind of person who would say that, you're not going to show up at this event. You won't be welcomed. No, nah, I mean, you would just not want to be here. You're right. So it's, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or change your ways. Yes. Come and say hi. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so where can they go check out you after they want to follow you on Instagram or on your website? Scott's Pizza Tours on Instagram. My website is scottspizzatours.com. Sliceouthunger.org yes. is a big one. And, yeah, check out all that cool stuff that's going on. You know what I'm looking forward to the most, actually? I just thought of it. I'm judging a competition tomorrow. Oh, The sweet. best. Which one? I can't say. Oh. Because I don't want to say because I don't want to give it away. I got you. I you know, got you. I got to be secretive about that. I got I'll you. tell everybody a couple months from now which one I judge. Smart plan. You know, Ju people don't realize that when when this is being judged, it's uh, judges take it seriously. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to like say that there was like a uh, biased. Yeah, you know. No. So it's like, blind judging. Yep. Behind a booth. Exactly. Like you're literally in a wall behind that nobody can come into or out of. True. For a couple hours. True. Scott, thanks so much for coming on the podcast, it's man. Total pleasure. It was awesome. Total honor. I'll let you know what I find out on the floor. For sure. Thanks for having me. See ya. Yeah, I'm going to hunt around. Yeah, man, go. It seems like it slowed down a little bit.